All right, iOS 17 is finally here, and in today's video, I put a bunch of my favorite tips and some cool hidden features I'd like to share with you guys so you could go ahead and impress your friends and really utilize this new firmware update to its full potential. So without wasting our time, let's get started. Starting off with the new advanced airdropping, where previously you had to hit that up arrow to actually airdrop something to another device. Now, all you have to do is just simply tap. You could transfer everything from images to contact information, and this is also compatible on the Apple Watch. And if you have an Apple Watch and you misplace and you like to pin your watch, you can actually press on it right here and it'll actually play a pin sound to actually locate your Apple Watch faster. To set this up, go into settings and go into control center and just go ahead and add this right here. Now when it comes to messages, stickers can now be personalized where you can actually use existing images that you have on your smartphone and just hold on the image subject, add sticker. Here it will bring up a bunch of different animations you can select from because you could actually add effects. And some of these effects will react to the motion up to gyroscope sensors inside your iPhone. But it doesn't just end there. You could create some live stickers as well. By selecting a live image on your camera roll and you do the same thing, it's actually animated now. And now you could just drop it in on any chat group like iMessage, even supports third party apps like WhatsApp, and you could utilize these stickers you've created on, on chat logs. Now other new features that are easily missed is if you receive a voice memo via iMessage, that is now automatically transcribed. So now it's not required to listen to the message, where now you're able to just read it. So if you're like me who don't enjoy voice messages, like voice recording, because you have to go in the quiet room, especially if you're in public, now you could just read it and it only takes a couple of seconds versus having to actually manually listen to the audio. Now I noticed dictation also got enhanced with iOS 17 as dictation is now more accurate and is more consistent to identify even swear word. So long gone are the days where ducking is a thing. Now contact posters, this is new and this is a feature that I truly enjoy. Very similar to like a gamer tag online, an oncoming call, it's gonna be that profile you created that they're gonna see and make it easier to identify who's calling. To find out how to personalize yours, you need to go on your phone app and where it says your contact information on top on my card, tap edit, tap edit again, and go ahead and tap customize. You create as how many you want as it's basically endless. And just like the log page on our iPhones, you can change the font, adjust everything. We'll also add the adept fact it's really cool and it's really awesome. And if you like to remain anonymous but, but still be somewhat personalized, a pro tip is use AI apps to generate an epic profile pic for you. Live voicemail is a new feature that got integrated for iOS 17. This way, whenever somebody leaves a voicemail, you can actually see the transcript live on your log page if you don't wanna pick up that call, if it's something like a spam, or it might be something important so you don't miss that caller. To enable this, you have to actually go into your iPhone settings and then scroll into phone and go down to live voicemail and enable it. So if you receive a call, but you don't have time to answer it because you're not sure if it's important, so long as that caller starts talking, the text will be transcript right there on your log page and you can read and see what's going on and you can decide to pick up that call after all. Now guys, this next one is one that slipped under many people radar and that is new text tones. Just by going to your phone setting and scroll down to sound and heptics, select ringtone and you'll discover newly added text tones. My personal favorite is Chirp. It's like an epic remix. Yeah. Now FaceTime calling. Now you can actually leave FaceTime call messages. Did you know when on a FaceTime call, if you do like a heart emoji, it'll create amazing graphics. This also works with the peace sign too. And it does this differently because instead of just being stickered on on the video, it will utilize front facing camera sensors and will make it seem three dimensional. Pretty clever how Apple is utilizing its hardware. It means this will also work on third party apps, not just native to FaceTime calling because this is utilizing the hardware that's available on your iPhone. So Zoom calls, and I can also imagine Skype, is compatible with these reactions. And it doesn't just end there, because during a call, you go on control center and you long press on the camera icon. Here you have the full capability to adjust the portrait mode side of things. So if you like to darken your background, brighten it, or blur the background a bit more, 
you have that capability just like portrait mode when it comes to taking front facing camera selfies. Oh, and the beauty doesn't end there for FaceTime calling. You actually can now share play. So if you're watching the video on YouTube or another th supported third party app like Netflix and Disney Plus, you can actually share your screen with the FaceTime caller that you're talking to. So you two or three, or however big your FaceTime party is, you guys could watch the same video at once. This is also supported on Apple TV as well. So go ahead, start a watch party with FaceTime now. Now I cannot forget about the new standby mode, which is by the way disabled by default. So you need to go into your setting real quick, scroll down to standby, make sure this is turned on, and leave always on display if you want to enable night mode if your cell phone supports it. Now, whenever you charge your phone on the device, so long as it's about flat, somewhat standing up, it will enable night mode and you'll find a bunch of different unique widgets as well as capability to customize. It's really cool. I could literally go spend like 10 minutes on this, but I'm not. But everything here is pretty much self-explanatory. But this page is my favorite because you can actually have two things running at once, including widgets. And while we're talking about widgets, widgets are now fully interacted on the lock page and the home page on our iPhone. Now, if you want to play a music, you could literally tap on it right here without having to launch the music app. This is extremely useful for not just the music widget, but also the reminder widget as well. And pro tip, if you ever mess up on a widget or a folder or something like that, just shake your iPhone and this will allow you to quickly undo the mistake you did. Yeah, the shake mode is not just exclusive for documents. It also supports the main OS. Now live wallpapers are actually back. And if you select a live image that you took a picture of, you can actually create live wallpapers. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on GIFs, at least at the time making this video, maybe a feature update will allow us to create live animations. Right now, it currently only works with live pictures you've taken with your iPhones. However, Astronomy received new planets you can select from as well as new cool animations. And the Kaleidoscope also received some new additional goodies, which look amazing when you unlock it. It just has a nice, flow to it. Now some of these apps receive amazing updates as well. One of my most favorite ones is the Safari. The Safari private tab now requires Face ID to unlock. So just like the hidden folder album which uses Face ID to unlock, the private tab on Safari now has this ability. And then the timer app now allows you to select and create up to unlimited timers at once. So if you can handle all those crazy timers, you can now do it on the iPhone first party app. And speaking of other improvements, Siri got some improvements. A new cool feature is disable the hey, you know, that thing. You can now disable that so you can actually request Siri to do something just by saying, Siri, turn on my TV. And just like that, Siri actually did it without me having to verbally say, hey. You need to go into the settings to get this to work. And where it says listen for, enabled Siri or hey Siri. Apologies if I set off your device, but if I did, that means we have the same voice, which is kind of creepy. Now a new safety feature I almost forgot to mention can be found on iMessage. And that is the new check-in feature. By tapping the plus icon and you scroll down to more, here you can long press and bring it up if you like to personalize your list stack like this and tap on check-in. Check-in is amazing because if you ever have to tell somebody that you will message them as soon as you arrive at your location, like to go home or something like that, your iPhone could handle that all for you automatically. So once you're home, they'll receive that notification that you have arrived. So gone are days when you're sitting on a couch and you forgot to message your friend and prevent them from panicking. Now this next one is kind of a scary one and that is AI voice cloning. You heard me right. If you actually go on your iPhone and go into settings, scroll down to accessibility in the speech section where it says personalized voice create a personalized voice and very similar to airpods when they do like a personalized eq setting you just run through a series of tests reading a bunch of things dialogues that it asks you to do and utilizing artificial intelligence it's able to copy your voice and it sounds like this hello this is how i sound like how you do better subscribe or else haha <laughs> It close enough still sound like a robot but the beauty about this in case you lose your voice or something like that you just double tap or triple tap the power button i'm sorry and you could type in a sentence and siri will actually say it out loud with your tone in case of an emergency at least i hope process takes about 20 minutes at most to set up 
And that's basically it. Another honorable mention is auto correction is also more enhanced than ever before. It's less likely to get things wrong, including swear words, as I stated. So not only dictation has been improved, but also the auto correction. If you have some features we missed and you'd like to share on your own, feel free to comment down below for the rest of us to also be aware of. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe because I have plenty of more because of this video over here, video over here where I go through all the cool features that's available on watchOS 10. Thanks so much for watching.